Hi everyone! Welcome to Lentamania tutorial. My name is Anna Sachno. Today we are going to make this stylish raffia bag. It is very light and rather spacious. I use just one skin of raffia, 250 meters. I also used leather handles and leather magnetic clasp. You may use different accessories if you want, like chain shoulder strap with D-rings, for example. I'd recommend to stick to magnetic clasp, though, but as an alternative you can attach a leather flap right here. It will also look great. You can contribute to the channel's development by making a donation. With the help of your donations, I'll be able to translate subtitles to English and voice over more video tutorials. You may also add subtitles in your own language and thus contribute to the channel's development as well. I'd really appreciate your help. And now let's get to work. To begin with, we need to make two identical circles that will form the base for our bag. The diameter of the circle is 19.5 cm. I crochet it in V tick, or in other words, check mark pattern. Total of 17 rows. The first row is the one with the sliding loop in it. As you see, the size of the bag depends on the size of these circles. If you want a bag of a different size, simply make a circle smaller or bigger. I'm crocheting based on a standard skim, which you'll see on the screen right now. I also have a tutorial on how to crochet a perfect circle. The link is in the top right corner. Follow that link to watch a tutorial about how to crochet a perfect circle using t-shirt yarn and also learn some tricks and life hacks. I highly recommend you do that because with raffia the stitches are very small and I'm afraid they won't be as clearly seen as with t-shirt yarn. When crocheting with raffia you need to leave a long tail. We'll use it to join the beginning with the end of a row. This tail should be 40 to 50 centimeters, something like that. Then let's make a sliding loop. The tail is on the right, the working thread is on the left. The working thread is the thread coming from the skin. We use it for crocheting. Slip the hook below the tail and pull out the working thread. You've got this loop on the hook now. Here it is. Let's crochet this loop. Like that. Each time slip the hook under the sliding loop, pull raffia out and crochet two loops on the hook together. Slip the hook again, pull the raffia, crochet two loops together. All in all you should make five stitches. You can count the stitches by these braids, which form while you are making single crochets. The elements we are making right now are called single crochets. Once five braids are ready, you need to stop crocheting and join the beginning with the end of the row. One, two, three, four, five. I've made five single crochets. Now we need to turn this sliding loop into a small circle. Take the tail and pull it gently. As you are pulling the tail, the chain of single crochets is turning into a circle, allowing us to close this row and make a final stitch. Let me show you how to do the joining. We'll use the tail for that, like I said. Draw the hook out of the last stitch. Two loops should be on it. So frog the stitch up until this state. One step back, like that. And now crochet these two loops together using the tail, not the working thread. Crochet them together and pull the tail through them. That's our circle. This is a working thread that comes from the skin. 
the last two loops of the first row are crocheted with the tail. Insert the hook under both loops of the first stitch into the so-called braid. Hook up the tail. Be careful, the tail not the working thread. Because for joining we are using the tail only. Pull it carefully to the back side. And now look, if you turn the circle around, you'll notice a strap behind the last stitch. Insert the hook under this strap and under the back loop of the braid. As you may see, my hook is right in the middle of the braid now. If you have the same, you've done it right. Pull the tail through the same two loops again, through the back loop and the strap. And by doing so, we've made the sixth braid, which looks just like the rest, just like all other braids. Like that, we join the beginning with the end of the row in a perfectly seamless way. There is no seam. Due to this trick, the circle is perfectly seamless. Once we are done with the joining, let's put the tail aside for now. We'll knit it in the end of the second row. Until then, we are using the working thread. In between the joining, we're using the regular working thread that runs from the skin. To start the second row, you need to insert the hook into any crochet, but preferably the one that's closer to the working thread. Thus, you'll avoid long stitches on the back. Insert the hook into the center of a tick. If you've never crocheted V-tick or check mark pattern before, try to Google how to do it because it's not clearly seen on Raffia. You might not be able to understand where to insert the hook to. But in a nutshell, each single crochet is a tick. You need to insert the hook right into the middle of such tick. Insert it both on the front side and on the back. You need to turn the work around from time to time to make sure the hook is in the middle of a tick on the back as well. In accordance with the scheme, uh, in a second row you need to make two single crochets out of each stitch, which means you should insert the hook into the same stitch twice and make two single crochets. Right now I've made the second single crochet and I'm moving on to the second stitch. Here's the next tick. Insert the hook into the center, both on front and back. Pull the loop out, crochet together. Insert the hook into the same stitch again, crochet two loops together on the hook. Repeat that with all six stitches of the first row. So by the end of the second row, you should be able to count 12 stitches. You may simply count the braids to check yourself. There should be 12 of them. In the second row, as you remember, you are making two single crochets out of each stitch. My last stitch, I'm making two single crochets out of it as well, uh, but do not finish the last single crochet, leave two loops on the hook. Take the tail, which we use for joining, and crochet the loops together using the tail. Draw the tail out and repeat the same steps as in the first row. 
insert the hook into the first stitch front to back, hook the tail up and pull it to the back side. Turn the circle around a little bit, find a strap that is in parallel with the braids, slip the hook below it and then below the back loop. Pull the tail through once again. Try not to crumple it, it should remain flat until the end of the work. It shouldn't turn into a thin thread. The second row is ready. Put the tail aside. You won't need it up until the end of the third row. Take the working thread again. Find the nearest stitch. Here it is. Insert the hook in the middle of the tick. Make two single crochets out of it. According to the scheme, in the third row we are going to alternate one single stitch with one doubled. It means you should make one single crochet out of one stitch and then insert the hook into the next stitch, into the next tick and make two single crochets out of it. I call it doubled stitch. Then make a single stitch again with only one single crochet. Then make two single crochets out of the next stitch. All in all, in the end of the row you should get 18 stitches. Each new row the number of stitches is increased by 6. According to the pattern the next stitch is single, If you know how to interpret crochet schemes, you may go back to the second minute of this video and read it. In this case, you may simply skip the following explanations regarding the circle. Because all information is in the scheme. But if you can't read the scheme, I'll explain you how you should continue. And you'll be able to make as many rows in your circle as you want. And for now, keep alternating single and doubled single crochets. We started the row with one single crochet. That's why we should finish with doubled. With doubled stitch, which means two single crochets in one stitch. In this case the pattern is correct. I've crocheted two loops together but it's not a good idea because it's the last stitch and I should crochet with the tail, not the working thread. So now I'm joining the beginning with the end of the third row. I won't explain in detail now because after you've done it a couple of times you should probably know it by yourself. Even if it seemed difficult in the beginning now it's uh, rather understandable and easy. So the third row is ready. Let's move on to the fourth one. Here we'll also add six new stitches. Pick the closest stick to the working thread, make a single crochet. And now attention, I'm about to explain the main crocheting principle. There are double stitches in every row of the circle. They are easy to spot. Two ticks come out of one stitch. With every new row they are less and less frequent. The main principle of a perfect circle, the one that doesn't resemble a polygon, is that you double the stitch that comes right after the double stitch in the previous row. 
So in the next row, these two stitches should be single. And the next one that is right on top of a single stitch of the previous row should be doubled. Let me show you. The first stitch of the fourth row is doubled. It is right on top of a single stitch in the previous row that goes after the doubled one. Now let's make the second single crochet out of it. Then there are doubled stitches in the previous row. In this row, make one st single crochet per each. The next one in the previous row is single. It is single and that's why we are doubling it in this row. Like that. Two single crochets out of this stitch. This trick will make double stitches shift in each new row. Here it is in the third row, in the fourth row, in the fifth row it will shift even more to the left. A bit more to the left in the sixth row and due to this double stitch will appear in spiral order and not on top of each other. The circle will be smooth and round and it won't turn into a polygon in the end. Let me show you once again, because it's really not easy to explain. That's why it's easier for those who can read schemes. This stitch was doubled in the previous row. We made two single crochets out of it. That's why we crochet these stitches as single in this row. Insert the hook into each of them just once and make a single crochet per each. Next stitch in the previous row is single. That's why we need to double it in this row. Insert the hook into this stitch twice and make two single crochets. Alright, then make single stitches again. Up until you move past the double stitch of the previous row. Then make a double stitch. Always double a single stitch that comes first after a double stitch in the previous row. This rule applies to all subsequent rows. Later you'll make fewer and fewer double stitches, but overall number of stitches will increase by 6 in every new row. Which means in every next row you add 6 addi additional stitches. This row should consist of 24 stitches, or 24 braids in other words. And I'll explain how and when to double stitches uh, one more time in the next row. So I'm starting row number 5 and I'm going to demonstrate the principle of single and double stitches once again. I've decided to start from this stitch. It is doubled, which means I made two single crochets out of it in the previous row. In this row we need to make them single. The next stitch in the previous row right after the doubled one, is single. We are doubling it in this row. Insert the hook in it twice and make two single crochets. Then make single stitches and try to locate the next double stitch out of the corner of your eye. Here it is, double stitch in the previous row. 
This means we need to double the next stitch in this row. How else you can understand this principle of alternating double and single stitches? With each new row, the number of single stitches between doubled is increased by one. In the second row, we made two single crochets out of each stitch. In the third row, we started to alternate. Single stitch, doubled, single, doubled. In the fourth row, we made double stitch, two single, doubled, two single, and so on. In the fifth row, we're making three single stitches, one doubled, three single, and so on. In row number six, there will be one doubled stitch, four single, and so on. In each new row, you should add one additional single stitch between doubled. That is shown clearly on the scheme. Based on this principle, you may crochet as many rows as you like and make your back as big as you want. Once you finish the circles, we will move on to making the walls. One more thing though. If you run out of tail, in case it's not long enough for the size of your circle or if it suddenly broke off, in this case you may simply cut the thread from the other side of the skin. So simply cut about 20 to 30 centimeters, it should be enough for a couple of rows. So leave a tail like that in order to close the rows. When you finish crocheting, you'll have additional threads of raffia, which you'll have to hide, which you'll have to weave in. In that respect, it's more convenient to have one tail that is long enough for the work, uh, so you don't have additional threads to hide. But in practice, it doesn't really matter whether you join the rows with the tail or any random thread. I've finished both of my circles. Their diameter is 19.5 cm. The circles should be as much alike as possible. Try to crochet them with the same density. And mind that your ticks are of the same height. And now we can start making the walls of our bag. It will look like a ribbon or a strip, which will crochet separately and then crochet or sew to both circles. That's how the ribbon will look like. It's crocheted by turning rows. Each row consists of 19 single crochets. The ribbon is 58 centimeters long. And now I'll show you how to do it. I think that experienced crocheters already understand how it's done and they can work on their own. But if you are a beginner, let me explain you what you need to do. First, let's make chain stitches. For the first stitch, wrap the tail around the working thread. Don't leave the tail too long. Insert the hook into the loop. Pull the raffia through. Tie up a bit, but don't apply too much force. It's our first chain, it's not a knot. Make other chain stitches by pulling the working thread through a loop on the hook. Try to make your chains neither too loose nor too tight. Work with average tension. Try to make your chains almost identical. As much like as possible. Let's count the braids that we've made. Overall, there should be 20 chain stitches. Five left. All right, I've made 20 braids or 20 chain stitches. The last one will serve as a turning chain. Do not crochet it, but insert the hook into the previous stitch. Slip the hook under both loops of the previous stitch. Pull raffia out and crochet two loops together. 
Insert the hook into the next stitch, pull raffia out and crochet two loops together. Keep on making these single crochets until the end of the row of chain stitches. This time we're crocheting in straight lines. We don't need to join the rows as we did while making the circles. But the main element is the same, it's single crochet. Insert the hook into the last stitch and crochet two loops together. Tie up the last loop a bit. Now we have this narrow strip. The first row consists of 19 stitches. Then let's make a turning chain. Turn the strip around and make the same single crochets but in the opposite direction. Skip the first stitch, I mean the turning chain, then slip the hook under both loops of the next stitch, make a single crochet. Slip the hook under both loops of the next stitch, make a single crochet. This time we're not inserting the hook in the middle of a tick, but we're slipping under the so-called braids, under both loops. In my opinion the V-tick pattern doesn't look very good here and doesn't look neat when crocheting in turning rows. That is why I'm making ordinary single crochets in a standard way. In the beginning your crochets might not be as neat and thorough as you want, but don't worry about that, it's just the first rows. Next rows will even out and also you can iron and steam off the parts of your bag when they're ready. So don't worry if your first rows are not as perfectly smooth and even as you want. And I also want to share a couple of tricks with you. In general, it's not difficult to crochet in turning rows. But you should not forget to crochet the last stitch. It is a very common mistake uh, beginners make. They don't fully understand where the last stitch is. Look, it might seem like we've crocheted the last stitch and now there's this nubble left and you might have no idea what to do with it. It is a turning chain that we've made after the row of chain stitches. You need to crochet it as well. Try to slip the hook under both loops and crochet this chain in every row. If you accidentally skip it a couple of times, your ribbon won't be straight. It will be narrower or wider in some parts, so it won't be that ideal. So pay attention to this detail. I've made another turning chain while I was talking and now I am turning the work around. Skip the first turning chain, insert the hook into the next stitch, slip under both loops, make single crochets but in the opposite direction this time. That's the principle of making the ribbon, it is 10 cm wide and of course it depends on the crocheting density. Yours might be a bit narrower or wider, it's not a big deal, it won't impact the bag. Once the ribbon is ready, we need to attach it to the main part of the bag. I'm going to tie it to my circle. Let's take the raffia and start to tie against the clock. Pick any stitch you like on the circle and insert the hook. Insert the hook into the angle stitch of the ribbon. Take the working thread and pull it through the ribbon and through the circle. Insert the hook into the next stitch 
of the circle, then into the ribbon, this time it's in between the rows, hook up the working thread again, and pull it through the ribbon first and then through the circle. You've got two loops on the hook now. Pull one through the other as if you were make making a slip stitch. It is, in fact, a slip stitch. Then insert the hook into the next stitch of your circle, then into the ribbon, hook up the working thread, pull it out. Two loops on the hook again. One loop, pull one loop through the other. Repeat these steps with each stitch. The seam that you get resembles a braid. It will go along the edge of your circle. So attach this side of the ribbon and then the other one by the same principle. Try to apply the same amount of force when pulling the raffia out, because the seam will look neater this way. Our bag is half ready. We just need to attach the other side. And also we need to attach the accessories. And attach the accessories. So I've attached a persimmon colored leather magnetic clasp and 50 centimeters leather handles of the same color. This is our stylish bag, which you can take with you for a walk in the city, for example. It's rather spacious and very light. You may find all the necessary tools, raffia of different colors, leather accessories in lentamania.ru online store. Click the link in the corner of the screen or go to the description below, you'll find the details there. So I wish you a great day and a lot of summer bags. Bye bye. Bags. Bye bye.